morning everybody enter the stars and wow got some wild revelations uh that i discovered just this morning actually so i decided to go live with you guys and talk about exactly what happened that i found regarding the mother of all bombs now the story goes for those of you that aren't up to speed on what just transpired the mother of all bombs had its debut over Afghanistan on April 13th, the Nangarshar airstrike. What is the mother of all bombs? Well, it is the massive ordnance air blast. And this is supposed to be the most, one of the most powerful non-nuclear bombs uh, ever made, as a matter of fact. Each one of these bombs costs $21 million. Now we're gonna get into the biblical importance of how this bomb relates exactly back to a biblical story about Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. And this is fascinating, it's amazing. And I don't think anyone's figured this out yet. So that is gonna be the show today. This bomb being dropped fell very close to the Passover date within three days okay it's not the exact day um but this is nissan 14 here this was a monday they dropped the bomb um on the 13th so within a few days of the passover of christ this would have been what would this have been the day just before he was resurrected he was so he was crucified um the day after on Nissan 15, and then he was resurrected three days later. So all of this falls within for Israel and for, in terms of biblical importance, into the story of Christ. To me, there is a connection there. Now we're going to, this is, goes deep, you guys, so put on your seatbelts, okay? And I discovered all this this morning with a little bit of research that they dropped this mother of all bombs basically just before the day that Jesus was supposed to be resurrected. Now, what is inside this bomb? It is largely made up of TNT and it has the most TNT of any bomb out there. And it is non-nuclear. So I began looking at the mother of all bombs and I've been again looking at the synchronicities between the mother of all bombs, the massive ordnance air blast, and the tribe of Moab, which has the very same acronyms. Now, the two should not be related, right? And so when you begin to uncover these things and see how all of our reality relates back to these biblical events, it reveals that the Bible is real. Because why would all these people in power care? Well, here's the kingdom of Moab right here. And the Dead Sea, where is the Dead Sea? I think this is the Dead Sea here. The land of Sodom and Gomorrah is not far from here, where sulfur rained down from heaven. The sulfur that rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah was the mother of all bombs. Why? Because the mother of all bombs is made up of sulfuric acid yes sulfuric acid is inside the mother of all bombs thought i had an article pulled up on the actual components but there's h6 is what it's filled with and tnt 11 tons of it as a matter of fact and tnt is made up largely of sulfuric acid so now we have a direct connection to sodom and gomorrah and the mother of all bombs that was dropped on the day before Christ was supposed to be resurrected historically. Do you think that's an accident? And this just blew me away because when I began to look at the Moabite area and the religion behind the Moabites, I was shocked because these people worshiped Ashtar, 
which was the goddess, the ancient goddess, pagan goddess from which Easter came. So now we have these Moabites worshiping the Ashtar Chemosh goddess. Here's the Chemosh goddess here. They worshiped. And talks about here right from the Bible. This was one of the false gods that Solomon worshipped as well. It says, according to the Bible, the worship of this god, the abomination of Moab, was introduced at Jerusalem by Solomon. He actually erected a statue. It wasn't brought down until the altar was not destroyed until the reign of Josiah. King Solomon built a high place for Chemosh on the hill before Jerusalem, which the Bible describes as the detestation of Moab, the reign of Josiah. So they erected this Chemosh, and then the female counterpart of this Chemosh god was Ashtar, which is Easter. So there you go. So do you think that the date that this bomb was dropped was an accident? It was dropped during the Easter season. Moabites connected to the pagan god. Moab were the children of Lot, where God drop the true mother of all bombs on the people that were involved in these sins. Can you believe that? And this is what we're dealing with. And here's the story from the book of Genesis itself. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed for their evil actions. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah, the mother of all bombs, from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew these cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. We all know the story about sodom and gomorrah and if he didn't that was one of the only times in the bible where god rained down such devastation and so now you see the enemy has their counterfeit versions of what they want you to believe in terms of them being gods they want us to fear them and their moabs their mother of all bombs you see you see how that works Instead of giving fear to God, which is God destroyed these people because of their homosexual. They won't talk about that. But they'll make their own bomb. So we fear them. And anyone who battles against them, they want us to fear their bombs and their death and their torture. But I won't do it. So that is the story. Unbelievable. Now Israel's involved in this because it says here. If you look at the biblical narrative, the Moabites first inhabited the rich highlands at the eastern side of the chasm of the Dead Sea, standing as far north as the Mount of Gilead. And God renewed his covenant with the Israelites at Moab before the Israelites entered the promised land. See how this fits in together? Israel. Now, the, the Israel we have today, I don't believe, is the true Israel. Okay? They have world domination. Right now, they have every country at their back who's run by the devil. So how can they be the true Israel? Moses died there, prevented by God from entering the promised land. This is where Moses died, at Moab. He was buried in an unknown location in Moab, and the Israelites spent a period of 30 days in mourning. According to the book of Judges, the Israelites did not pass through the land of the Moabites, but conquered Sion's kingdom and his kingdom in Heshbron. So here's the whole story behind the Moabites, mother of all bombs. Now, down here, they get into um, some of the battles and things like that. But I think the most important thing to focus on here is this human sacrifice. It says here, according to Second Kings, at times, especially in dire per peril, human sacrifices were offered to Chemosh as by Mesha, who gave up his son and heir to him. And then it talks about King Solomon, um, talks about the Moabite stone, a female counterpart of Chemosh, Ashtar, Chemosh, this is Easter, Ashtar is Ishtar is Easter, right? 
And uh, so here we have in detail the religious practices of the Moabites. Now let's go down in here. Here's Jewish tradition. According to the Bible, the Moabites opposed the Israelite invasion of Canaan. So this is interesting, as did the Amorites as a consequence. Now we know that the Canaanites and the Amorites were descendants of the Nephilim after the flood. Post flood, I tracked these bloodlines back and found that all of them came through the bloodlines of Ham post flood after they got off the ark. Ham had three sons. One of them was Canaan. Canaan was cursed. He also had Mizraim, which became Egypt. The first time in the Bible the word Egypt is mentioned is the word Mizraim. It means Egypt. And so now we begin to see the whole picture start to come together. Now Israel in these days, just after the flood, were commanded to fight and exterminate the Canaanites. That was the enmity between the seas that we talk about so much on this channel. The fight between God's seed, the Israelites, and again, the seed different Israelites back then, and the seed of the dark side or the giants, the Canaanites. We were like grasshoppers in their eyes and on each other's eyes, is what they said about the size of these Canaanites. God commanded um, his seed to eradicate this other seed because they were much bigger than the Israelites and they were trying to basically kill um, the Israelite seed, which was the seed of Christ to come. He was from the tribe of Judah. Those were Christ's descendants. And had the Canaanites been successful, at killing um, the Israelites, then there would be no Jesus. I'm sure God would have found a way, but all of this is symbolic, you guys, as well. It's all symbolic. 